All right, everybody, this is Ross. I thought in today's video, I would talk to you guys today about persimmon tree fruit drop. And there's actually a number of reasons, a number of theories that currently exist um, on persimmon tree fruit drop. And in fact, the persimmon really is kind of synonymous with fruit drop. I mean, even older trees that are well-established still continue to drop fruits, um, especially if they are not pollinated by a male persimmon. So it really happens though quite frequently and maybe you're here watching this video right now because your tree is dropping but a lot of it is attributed mostly to its young age. I've also heard theories by the way on the fact that these younger trees as an example tend to grow a lot more. Uh, maybe they have too much nitrogen as an example or maybe you're feeding them uh, too much and then they tend to grow and then as a result they're growing so much they drop their flowers. My theory at least last year and what I've taken steps to kind of correct was actually the form. Instead of growing persimmons here where maybe in this location it's not as much light as I'd like, um, I've actually cut out the center of the tree opening up uh, the center to give it more light and actually you could see these scaffolds if I just walk around the tree it's getting a lot more light than it has in the past especially this this back part on the other side of the tree that you guys can't necessarily see but for me at least that has always been a great strategy for uh, producing fruits but also ripening fruits is giving your trees access to more sunlight uh, opening up the canopy widening that up it's really much across the board with all fruit trees that that can really help. So for me, I thought that was my current theory. I've also heard theories about, you know, a lack of water at the time of flowering, too much water at the time of flowering. Again, maybe a nutritional deficiency or too much food. Um, there's a new theory though that I've kind of discovered and I think might be more plausible than the others um, that I actually, just observed this year um, I've observed it now on this tree for about three or four years in different amounts of severity um, believe it or not by the way before I get into this theory is that this tree is my rosianca my oldest persimmon on the property I have about eight or nine persimmon trees and this one as I said is the oldest but for the first six years this is probably I think it's about its seventh season here the first six years, it dropped almost 100% of its crop every single year. Uh, so it's kind of insane that I'm still dealing with this, and it's very frustrating seven years in to still be having this problem. Um, so what I what I learned, though, and what I wanted to do was actually learn more about these trees. I love the persimmon so much. I planted other varieties across the yard, uh, really try to observe different varieties, how they behave what the differences are between one tree just to the next tree. You know, just because you plant one variety uh, doesn't mean it's gonna behave the exact same way as the same variety of a different tree, you know? So I wanted to really expand my knowledge on these trees. And what I'm noticing, oddly enough, very differently from all my other trees compared to this one is actually the growth. So on this particular tree, my Rosianca, I actually have on all the fruit buds, all the, uh, the ends of the branches, the, the, um, the terminal buds on the branches from last year, all end up producing, for the most part, flowers. You know, if you have a, a water shoot, as an example, they can come in later in the season and they're uh, usually very vigorous, don't produce flowers, and they're also very healthy from bottom to top. But if you look here at these new branches that have my flowers on them, they all produce these very discolored, small, weird looking leaves that may even show signs of nutritional deficiency, may show signs of uh, mosaic virus. Um, and it all kind of corresponds with, if you can see here, like there's usually a leaf, discolored leaf, and then a flower, discolored leaf, and then a flower, discolored leaf, and then a flower. So, it's like when the tree wakes up and starts putting out this new growth, it's having some sort of issue. And then at a certain point of the season, as you can see, the leaves are beautiful, pristine, like there's nothing wrong with them. 
but in the beginning portion, there's that issue. And my other trees, as I said, don't have this problem. So I kind of in the last year figured out what I think this might be. And I actually was watching a persimmon tour video uh, from Edible Landscaping. Um, they're down in Virginia, it's a great nursery, highly recommend it. Michael McConkie was taking around his crew, around his, his property and showing his different persimmon trees. And one thing that they mentioned in the video was actually the persimmon psyllid and how they're planting different things uh, like fennel, different flowering plants to actually attract parasitic wasps to then kill this psyllid. And I didn't know anything about the psyllid, but I've seen the psyllid here actually in the past, I remember, because you can really tell in this new growth, it really becomes deformed. It really looks sad, much sadder, as I said, more, I've seen it more severe on this tree in years past. I researched recently about the psyllid as well. The way you get rid of them is either you use a dormant spray. They usually kind of hibernate in the branches, in the crevices and cracks and things. You could use a dormant spray to kill them or lessen their numbers. Um, and then when the, what they do is they wake up in the spring with all this new growth, feed on the new growth, and then eventually things like parasitic wasps come in and either wipe them out or it gets too hot, as I've read. So at a certain point of the season, it's too hot, and then the psyllid is just not like a thing anymore. It's so strange. Um, so that kind of explains what's going on with this tree, at least with this weird looking growth. And again, I haven't noticed this on the other trees. So what I'm thinking is, is that this psyllid problem with these deformed leaves, because we now have like almost a lack of photosynthesis, the flowers are, developing and forming and they're not being necessarily potentially fully supported by healthy strong leaves that can really produce the photosynthesis required to support this flower development throughout the whole process now oddly enough i've seen the flowers develop all the way through i've even seen them be pollinated year after year and they just fall off so is that really the issue i don't know I'm sure it's probably contributing in some way, but maybe that is, and if you have it in a certain severity, as it is like this year, nowhere near as severe, I think, as it was last year, so that's a good sign. Maybe cross, keep my fingers crossed this year, but maybe that's an interesting theory, I think, on fruit drop, on persimmons. Let me know down in the comments if you guys are seeing this problem, you know anything about this, if it does indeed impact the fruit drop, um, you know, if indeed actually that's what this is, because I'm not even 100% sure that this is the psyllid that's causing this. And I've noticed this again, just on this tree, all the other trees are super healthy, no problems. So I wonder, um, you know, really if this is really what's going on and uh, if this, if I instead, you know, get myself more of these flowering plants as I've been doing, making a concerted effort to do that, but also come in here with a dormant oil in the fall as kind of a solution, maybe I'll actually see a lot more fruits ripen than um, I have in the past. And maybe this whole time I've had the answer in front of me and just never noticed it. So if you guys enjoyed this one, please hit that subscribe button. I thank you guys for watching and sticking around with this uh, long theory of mine. We'll see you soon, all right? Take care and uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think, all right? See you next time.